All right, so what we have here is a little my open math assignment um, where you'll want to simplify these expressions. And you could do this step by step, but what I want to emphasize here is using our scientific calculator to kind of do the work for us. Um, this can be useful when we're checking our answers. So maybe you have to show your work so you're doing the steps, but you get to the end. Um, what you can do is to double check that answer. We just want to make sure we plug it into the calculator correctly. So what I want to emphasize is the use of our exponents here, parentheses, we'll look at a square root scenario, and especially fractions. So on this right hand side here is the Desmos scientific calculator. Um, it functions very similarly to other scientific calculators with um, say, like calculators on your phone or things like that. Sometimes the format, you can call it kind of a horizontal format where you have to write it all in a single line. Um, this calculator in Desmos is a little bit more dynamic than that. And with this, it's very powerful and I like it a lot because what it can do is it can really match the format of how you write the math out and you don't have to be as careful with parentheses and things like that. So um, my recommendation is to like not use the built-in calculator on that come with computers and phones because it's a little limited in terms of formatting. So using this Desmo scientific calculator, or if you have a calculator at home that has, um, I think it's called Pretty Print, where it'll organize it for you, that's a great function as well. Okay, so let's start with fractions. Well, fractions, exponents, and parentheses in this question one right here. So a really nice function on this Desmos calculator, you can see this A over B button right here. So what I'm gonna do is click that, and what that's gonna do is separate my numerator and denominator for me. So it's already setting it up to organize it like we see up here. And I'm gonna have five, and then for the exponent, you can either, either do like shift six for that little carrot top, um, that'll bump you up to the exponent, or there is an exponent key here specifically for squaring things. If you need to use any other exponent, you would use this a to the b. Um, so if I do this a squared, it'll give me that exponent too. And I'll just go minus 4 squared. And then what I'm going to do is just go down to the denominator, and I want to match these parentheses so it follows the order of operations. And then I'll just show, so if I do shift six, it automatically bumps me up to the exponent part and then I could type in the two. And there's my value of nine and that would be my answer there. Yay. All right, let's say we have a square root. So we have our square root button right here. And then if I want a fraction within the square root, what I'm gonna do is just click that fraction button right there and I'll put a fraction. If you need to do anything outside of the square root, you can just click away from it either before or after. But we're underneath the square root here and we're gonna have nine times 48 over three. And we get our answer 12. Hey. Okay, this one here, this question three, this is the kind of horizontal format I was talking about, like specifically this division symbol. So what we'd want to do is we would want to make sure like visualizing our separate terms. So wherever I have addition or subtraction, I have these separate terms so like seven is separate from this six divided by three is separate from this four times four squared. So what I want to do is kind of show you what if I just typed this in as I read it from left to right. So six plus six divided by three plus four times four squared. This is not correct. And it's because as I was typing, it grouped all of this in the denominator when actually only three would be in that denominator right there. So what it isn't taking into account is that basically it's operating as if there were parentheses from that three to the four squared, but there isn't. So as I was typing this in, knowing my order of operations, I would have that six divided by three, and then I would just need to click to the right of it and go plus four times four squared. And that would get me to the correct answer. So with typing into calculators, it can be a great source for checking answers, but also keep in mind your order of operations and how the calculator is thinking. 
Okay, let's do this two times. So I'll do two times the square root of 16. So I'll go square root of 16. And then to get out of the square root, like if I pl put plus four, you can see that square root symbol's carrying on. So I wanna get out of there. So you can either do the right arrow key or you can use your mouse to click to the side. Then I'll go plus four, parentheses, three minus one, and then close up those parentheses. So again, this calculator, the Desmo Scientific Calculator, you can see with these, it's really matching the format. The only one that's different is the one with this division symbol that was that kind of horizontal format. But um, otherwise, it really closely matches and it can make you feel confident in that answer that you're getting out. All right, two more examples here. One, um, This one has negative numbers in it, and what you'll do is... On this calculator, you just use the subtraction symbol. Some calculators have a very specific negative symbol button. So if you're getting errors out, but you know you typed it incorrectly and you can see the minus signs on that calculator, um, double check. It's usually next to the decimal button on the calculator. You see these parentheses with the subtraction symbol between those. That's specifically the negative number. So if you're using the subtraction symbol instead of negative, it's going to cause errors. With the Desmo Scientific Calculator, if I'm not making it clear how much I love this calculator, it's more dynamic in that it accepts um, the negative symbol for both negative and subtraction. So I have my 3 squared, and I'm going to go minus 4, and I'm going to go parentheses, minus 5, parentheses, oops, Okay, parentheses, negative 1. So all using that subtraction symbol there. And what, we're getting a negative 11 out, it matches perfectly. Then the last one I wanted to show here is a substitution scenario. So when we're substituting, I really want to emphasize the importance of parentheses when substituting. So I'm going to have b squared, but what I'm going to do is for b, I'm going to have parentheses to the left and right of that number for b. So b is a negative 1, so there's b squared. So I want to make sure those parentheses are there, otherwise it's going to calculate it incorrectly. I'm going to go minus 4, and then I'm going to have parentheses around a, which is also negative 1, and then parentheses around c, which is positive 6. And there we get a 25 out. And we're all good there. So those are some examples you'll go through very similar scenarios when you go through um, these questions on your own, but using that calculator and making sure you can organize things correctly. The one last thing I want to show with a calculator that didn't come up here but can be helpful is working with fractions. So let's say I need to take a fourth plus a fifth. And we went through all that work of doing that by hand, and we want to be able to do that, but it's just nice to have a source to double check our work for us. So as you can see, it gives the decimal out, but often if we're working with fractions, we want that final answer in fraction form as well. So with that, what's really nice is this button right here says convert to fraction, and it will convert it to the reduced fraction. So it'll reduce it for you, and it will carry out that calculation for you. So that can be a great resource to double check your work. Again, we're having scenarios where you need to show your work in order to get credit with quizzes and exams, but use this as a resource to double check your work. Know that you have that answer with 100% certainty, or if it's coming up different, troubleshoot and try to figure out in your work where it went wrong. So that's the Desmo Scientific Calculator. Again, it's very similar to other calculators as well, but this will be a great resource when you're going through your work.